uh, oneness in the law, right? Um, the book of John chapter 17 uh, talks about how important it is for us to be one in the law. In John chapter 17, if you look at, uh, if you open your Bibles to the book of John chapter 17, John chapter 17 is divided into three big pieces, right? The first big piece <coughs> is uh, uh, the Lord Jesus talking about or praying to the Father uh, about the work that God gave him on earth and how the Lord has completed that work on earth. It is very important for us to understand the importance of completion. Multiple times we are, we are so focused on the starting phase of our lives or our journey in the Lord. But it is absolutely important for us to, important to, to consider the starting phase of our lives in the Lord. But it is even more important and it is utmost important for us to figure out the ending part of our lives. How we are going to end our race. Amen. Starting, many people will start, and may some people, Book of One Corinthians talks about, you know, we all start, but if we don't end, right, it is not going to be useful for us. So many days, many times, it's very important for us to focus every day of our lives. Ending could be any day, right? The beauty of ending is, ending is not like 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Ending is today. For some of us, ending could be tomorrow. For some of us, end, ending could be a week from now or a year from now, right? So we see Apostle Paul at the end, last parts of Second Timothy talks about how the ending, I have fought the fight, I have won, I have run the race, I have, you know, finished my course and I have, you know, the crown of righteousness is laid for me. So Paul is focused about the ending. So Lord, you have given me a work, you have called me, you have separated me from the road to Damascus. From that point on, you have made my life filled with sufferings. I have finished my course, you know, at the end of the day, I'm done. Now I'm waiting for arrival into heaven, right? So that is called finishing. So Jesus also is talking in the book of John chapter 17 about the finishing. Look at these verses. I'll read a few verses for you. Father, the hour has come. What does that mean? Father, my time on earth is done. I was here for 33, 33 and a half years. 30, 30 years I was just like, God, Jesus didn't do any ministry, do any, any work in the form of ministry, right? Jesus lived a holy, perfect life. He lived a sinless life. The book of, you know, uh, second Corinthians, first Corinthians talks about he who knew no sin became sin for us. Right? So now look at this. Now he says like, you know, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. The word glorify is mentioned tremendously in the book of John chapter 17. Right? Look at this. Glorification. Now, the, now Jesus is telling, Father, glorify, now the time has come. Now the time of glorification. Right? Jesus on the cross. Right? is getting to the point of glorification right that your son also may glorify you see now now, the, the, now everything in jesus comes from the father right the role of the father role of the son role of the holy spirit so now we see the role of the son saying lord i mean the hour has come glorify your son everything that i receive is coming from the father the father the son is telling the father lord the time has come now now glorify your son so that the son can glorify you right Look at this. As you have given him authority over all flesh. This is the same authority that we see in the book of uh, Matthew. Last part, parts of Matthew talks about how the commission of, uh, of uh, commission has been given to the disciples and also to each one of us. Right? All authority has been given to Jesus. Right? So in the name of Jesus, go baptize. Right? Say, so going, making disciples in, in the name of the, in the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Right? The authority talks about the authority. As you have given him authority over all flesh. Right? Him in the sense, Jesus. That he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Look at this. So that authority in Jesus is resulting in eternal life for each one of us. Right? Eternal life. Now look at the word called eternal life. And this is eternal life. What is eternal life? This is eternal life that they may know you. That they may know the Father. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Here if you look at eternal life, that eternal life is not just knowing the Father without the Son, but knowing the Father through the Son. Amen? So we talk about eternal life multiple times, you know, multiple religions, you know, they are all focused on like reaching the Father without Jesus. But the Bible explicitly talks about eternal life to the Father through the Son Jesus. Only, right? Only through the Son Jesus. And this is eternal life that you may know Him, the only true God and Jesus 
Jesus Christ whom you have sent the word and is important there right going to the father through Jesus Christ right uh, that you that you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent simplifies what is eternal life knowing the father through the son is going to return is going to result in eternal life for each one of us amen look at verse 4 I have glorified you on the earth the life of Jesus on earth until this point is all bringing back glory to the father right that we can claim that promise and say lord i want to live on earth so that i can glorify you all the days of my life right you claim those promises and now we say i have glorified like jesus exactly like jesus i mean all the time in this great in this great lord's word you have to put yourself say that lord if you have done it right you have equipped me to do that amen if he has done it and we see all through this principles like baptism is for not for jesus it's for me right Every principle that the Lord has done multiple times, He has done that so that we can do. The Lord coming and washing the feet of the disciples. The Lord says, like, you know what? I mean, Lord, why did you do this to me? The disciples come, Lord, this is a this is not what you are expected to do. Peter comes back and says, Lord, I mean, you're not going to do this, right? I mean, the Lord says, if you are not, if I cannot, if I won't do this, then you're not part of me. Then Peter says, like, you know, not just my body, baptize me fully, right? Pour this water on my head so that I'll be clean. But the Lord says, you know, you don't have to be. Just I'll wash your feet and you will be clean. <coughs> and the Lord actually, after verses, uh, the next verses talks about how that, he says like, you know what, this I'm doing it so that you would do it for your fellow brethren. Right? So you see that the Lord has done everything for us so that we would do for our fellow brothers. So if you look at this verse, he says, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work. You have given me to do. Classic verse. Lord says, you know what, Lord, all this time on earth, I have glorified you. Never, ever, in any event or any illustration, I have not glorified you. What a great, what a great uh, prayer, prayer that sees is that the Lord says, Lord, Lord, I'm, I was always faithful to you. I never disobeyed you. I never fell short of any of your requirements. Not my will, but your will. The Lord all the time, every illustration. I mean, it's a great testimony, right? The Lord is telling, has translated that to us. Now we, right? The first Adam, the second Adam, the second Adam. The first Adam is about disobedience. The second Adam is about obedience. Amen? And now that obedience is resulting in glorification. That Jesus is now saying, look at this word. I have glorified you on earth. Right? I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me. Is, is it not connected to the verses that Apostle Paul talks in the last words, last parts of his life? Lord, I mean, I finished the race to the extent I am able to, so I mean, like do the work of you, I mean, work of yours. I did everything and now a crown of righteousness is awaiting for me. Is that, isn't that a connection? That's a classic connection between this verse and that verse. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. Look at this word called together. So the glory that you bring to the Lord has actually come to us or come to Jesus through the Father. Father gives the glory first and now the Son is glorified and now the Son brings glory back to the Father. So there is a loop back. Right? We call it the loop back. It has come from above, come down and now it is coming back up. Right? The Father comes, Jesus comes down to the earth and now He takes us back into the world. Now we see a, a loop back mechanics. Right? And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. Again, the same principle applies to us. That we would be glorified with Jesus. With the glory which I had with you before the world was. So we see that the glory existed before. And we beget his glory. The glory of the invisible. Right? So we see that. The book of 1 John talks about that. The book of John talks about that. That we see that we have beheld his glory. And that glory originated from before the foundation of the world. That is the first part of the prayer of Jesus. It is finished his race on earth and the time has now come. He has ful fulfilled everything. He has obeyed everything. The book of Hebrews talks about that the Lord Jesus Christ obeyed, learned obedience. Right? I mean, it's like, why would the Lord learn obedience? Have you seen, have you ever thought about why the Lord should learn obedience? The Lord learned obedience not for himself. So, but that obedience, that we would learn obedience through the same obedience that the Lord Jesus Christ learned. 
He said, look, look at that verse. Go quickly find that verse, please. Uh, can you read that verse? Hebrews chapter, it should be around 4. Hebrews chapter 4. <coughs> Look at this. Though he was son, yet he learned obedience for the things which he suffered. <laughs> like he learned obedience. What that means is the Lord technically doesn't have to learn obedience, but he learned obedience for you and me. So that I would learn obedience. Right? Do I have to learn obedience? Yeah. Because by nature, I am an Adamic nature, which is about disobedience. Right? Disobedience has naturally come to me. By the way, it is not, somebody didn't teach me disobedience. Disobedience has naturally come to me because of the Adamic nature. And now I have to learn things that I have, that I don't have. I have unlearned things that, that naturally came to me. Lord Jesus learned obedience. So now he's wanting me to learn obedience. Right? So only because of that. Look at this verse. Now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. Now I have done everything. Now, Lord, I'm ready for your glorification. For now, I'm ready for your work in my life. I finish my work, then the Lord's, Lord is going to come finish his work. Amen? So the Lord laid down his life for our, our, our sake and he died. And now the Father raised Jesus back to life. Amen? So look at this word. You finish your work, then the Father comes and finishes, it, finishes the work that he is supposed to finish. Jesus finished his work on uh, his life on earth, his work on the earth. He has, that's why we see the, on the cross he says it is finished. Right? I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega. By the way, the word called it is finished with an exclamation ends in the book of Revelation. He says, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the, I am the end. Right? It is done. The book of Revelation talks about it is done. I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega. What the Lord is on the, saying on the cross is it is finished, it is done. I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega, I'm the beginning and the end. That's the beauty of the cross. The cross is such a beautiful place. That's why Paul says, I preach Christ crucified. There's something blocked to the Jews, right? But that is the place where the victory is. And you preach the cross, the devil will run away. Because cross is a place where it was put to public shame. Cross is a place where the devil was disarmed. All the powers and principalities have been put to open shame. Book of Colossians talks about that. So look at that. So now the second part of John chapter 17. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Look at the word. Kept your word. What does kept your word means? That means now the eternal life that is mentioned a few verses ago which is right. What is eternal life? That you know the father through the son. Amen. So now these disciples have now got an access to the Father through the Son, right? We see the same thing mentioned in 2 Timothy where there is no mediator between God and man. Amen? That Jesus, there is now once you have Jesus, there is no mediator between God and man. You don't have to go through any, any other human being. You can straight away go to the Father through Jesus. Amen? There is no mediator. So we got to understand that principle that there is no mediator between, between uh, God and man other than Jesus himself. Right? Look at this. Um, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me. And they were yours. You gave them to me and you have kept your word. And they have kept your word. What does that mean? That they have identified the Father through the Son. Verse 7. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. And look at this. And now they say like, you know what? Everything that Jesus has received or Jesus has given to them has not just been given to them by Jesus himself, but that everything has come to Jesus through the Father. Verse 8, for I have given them, given to them the words which you have given me and they have received them and have known surely that I have come forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. They believe that you sent Jesus. I pray for them. Look at verse, verse 9. This is a prayer of Jesus for the 12 disciples. Obviously, there is one missing. Right? I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me for they are yours. The Lord is praying. Look at the word of prayer of the Lord. And all mine are, are yours <coughs> and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Look at the classic word. I am glorified in them. So the, the Lord Jesus is glorified in 
the disciples. You can translate that to the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in us. Right? So that is important because the glory of the Lord is going to get, the Lord is going to get his glory through us. If we are not reflecting the radiance of Christ Jesus, if we are not spreading the fragrance of Christ Jesus, then the Lord will not get his glory. Amen? So the glory that is due to the to the, uh, to Jesus is coming through his children. Amen? Through us. That means people will look at us and say, they glorify the Father in us. Right? Look at that. That is why our lives are so important. How we reflect, how we live our lives on earth is so important because our lives are glorifying the Father or not. Verse 11. Now I am no longer in the world, but they, these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those who, whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. This is a deep down and one word that is sometimes you might just gloss over it and may not pay attention to that. But the word called one. So now look at the word that is so important in this. The whole chapter, by the way, this is a foundational word. John chapter 17, the foundational word, so you can stand on top of this one word, is the word called one. Right? Look at this. That you have given me that they may be one as we are. So now the Lord is talking about these 12 disciples. I would add the apostle Paul as part of the 12th disciple, right? Because Paul says in the book of Galatians, though I was least of the apostles, right? We look at this. He says like, and that they may be one as we are. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and you and me and the church becoming one. And that is why we see the book of Ephesians talks about one body, one spirit, one baptism, right? Through all, through you all, in all, right? So that that oneness, the book of Acts chapter 2 talks about the same one accord. Disciples all being one. <coughs> see this. That they may be one as we are. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. See, look at that. While I was in the world, I kept them. The Lord kept them, protected them, right? Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of benediction. And though, though that the scripture might be fulfilled. This, the Lord mentioned about Judas Iscariot. That he found his own way. Verse 13. But now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world. That they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Look at the words. Beautiful words. Multiple times, we think that the solution to many of the issues are that we leave the world. That once we leave the world, we are, right? Like, so it's like, you know, I'm not praying that they should, the Lord is telling it. I do not pray that they, you should take them out of the world. The Lord wants us to be in the world, and in the world there's going to be sufferings, persecutions, right? But now the Lord is going to be part along with us. Right? The book of Philippians talks about the last, last parts of Philippians talks about how Paul says, you know what? I was dealing with so many, so much persecution. Nobody was with me. Everybody forsook me. Everybody left me. Everybody left me. So when Paul was going through persecution, everybody left. But when the Lord was in God of Gethsemane, everybody left. Right? That's the typical nature, right? When somebody's in problem, we all leave. Is that right? Yeah. When somebody's in problem, Everybody leaves. And after some time, slowly they'll recover back and say, Oh yeah, did we leave? Let's go back. <laughs> Look at this verse. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. The Lord is talking about protection. Lord, protect these people. I mean, I can feel the Lord's protection every, I mean, like, there are like, every, almost like every day you can feel the Lord's protection in your life, right? You see, like, yeah, that, that, if that step didn't happen, if this step didn't happen, this step didn't happen. So I was like, went back in India, it's like, I'd missed like three weeks of my classwork. And I said, like, you know, I need to go do my homework. I logged back in India. And the internet in India is not flexible for me to like do my work at home. It's so slow that 
I, one frame comes and after 10 seconds another frame shows up. It's like, this is not going to work. Then I looked at my homework, if there was any homework I have to do. Because every week there was homework. So I like, you know, how am I going to do the homework? And by, when I looked at the homework, the next homework was due November 20th. I said like, how come this homework is not there? And I didn't have homework for like two weeks. And I looked at it and like, it's by design. I went back and looked at the syllabus and Lord, I said like, you're so awesome. And I got back in and started doing my homework today. The Lord protects us, amen? The Lord is in the business of taking care of your business. Can you say that? The Lord is in the business of taking care of your business. And he has done that consistently, without fail. The Bible talks about that you are faithful, right? I mean, the book of 2 Timothy says that he's always faithful, he can, right? But the question is, if, are we faithful? He's always going to be faithful. Even the demons say that, you know, there's only one God, right? The demons will say there's only one God and that God is God the Father, God the Son, right? The demons know very clearly, right? So what's the difference between, right? Demons and... The Lord says, are you faithful? The Lord is not concerned about his faithfulness. The Lord's faithfulness is already done. So our faithfulness is what counts now, right? Are we faithful? Are we obedient? Are we glorifying the Father in our lives? Every day of our lives. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Look at these words. Now the Lord says you are not of the world. Though you live in the world, you are like a fish in the sea. The saltiness of the fish is not going to attach. The sins of this world are not going to be attached. They are not going to become part of your life. Right? The book of Galatians talks about this verse called... Though Look at this verse. T turn to Galatians chapter... It's a beautiful verse. Out of Galatians... Uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 18. <coughs> Struggling to find the words. Those <laughs> Look at this. For I build again those things which I who destroyed. It is not God who destroyed. God enabled you to destroy. Amen. So multiple times you say, Lord, you know, take this thing out of my God. Lord, take this thing out of me. Right? But the Lord is equipping you and He's enabling you to do it yourself. The, the Lord has given you power. Amen. The Lord has given you everything. And now, the, the book of, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians says, you know, you're already full. You have already reigned as kings and priests without us, right? You reigned as kings and priests. He's talking about reigning. That you're talking about ruling like kings and priests. Right? Look at this verse. Um, for if I build again those things which are destroyed, the things that, that you destroyed, which I make myself a transgressor. I make myself a transgressor. If I know to do good, but I do not do good, it is called. I know to do good. Right? I know to do good. Things come in your life. You know to do good. There is one place. I was in India. And, yeah, it's in India. Yeah. And I gave him 100 rupees and I bought some. You know, this India is filled with all kinds of like street food. <laughs> I'm like, I've been locked in the garden and like, you know, there was like some place went out and after there was street food. And I gave him, I mean, like, I gave him 50 rupees. He gives me 80 rupees back and I took like some snacks. I gave him 50 rupees, he gave me 80 rupees back. I was like, with this new notes, it's hard to recognize no, no, which note is which note. I was like, looking at these notes, I was like, I thought, like I, gave you, I thought I gave you 50. The 50 note is a blue note now. It's like new Indian currency is like different. I gave him 50, he gave me 80. He said like, I said like, I thought I, I asked him to count again. And it's like, he counted again. And he said like, I gave you right. And I said, like, no, I don't think he gave me right. And I was like, debating with him. And finally he said, like, yeah, yeah, I made a mistake. So, you know, I mean, multiple times you think, yeah, yeah, let's just keep quiet because, you know, got it to, to 20 bucks, 30 bucks more, right? Multiple times, you know, the, that flesh, by the way, the flesh naturally comes up and say, like, you know, just keep quiet. <laughs> right? If you keep quiet, silence is taken for, like, what? He's like, yeah, nobody knows, right? 
And I was like, I was like telling him, but the guy was like shocked. And he was like looking, who is this fool who is giving me money back? Right, but you are not in the world, eh, man. You are not in the world. You are the son of the Most High. You are the child of the Lord. And it is our job to reflect Christ in every action, in every deed. Right, look at this. The verse talks about, for I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Right? If you, you, you build it back, you destroy it and then you build it back again. It's like a dog, right? I mean, you throw the vomit and the dog goes back and it's the same vomit. It's, by the way, it's in the Bible. He throws it and then goes back and says, okay, I threw it away, now I, I need something more to eat. Let me go back and eat the same thing that I threw it away. That's called the work of the devil. That's called the work of a dog, right? Look at this. Verse 20, I do not pray for those alone, but also that those who will believe in me through it. Look at this verse 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. And that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Look at this word 21 carefully. That they all may be one. Now God the Father, God the Son, disciples mentioned earlier, but now he translates that to each one of us. That we are all one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, and that they may also may be one in us. By the way, this word is not connecting us to the disciples so that the disciples would connect to the Father. That is not the... Right? This word is explicitly connecting us to the Father and the Son. Isn't that beautiful? Disciples are also connected to the Father and Son. So we are all brothers in Christ Jesus. So that is the status that God gave each one of us. That we are connected straight away to the Lord Jesus Christ. So talks about oneness. Once we are one, we can achieve a lot of things. Is that true? We can achieve tremendous things for the Lord once we are one as a body of Christ, one as you know, children of the Lord, and now we have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we are all one. Right? That's why we see the book of uh, one John talks about the fellowship with the Father, fellowship with the Son, fellowship with one another. Absolutely important. That was the first topic I wanted to share. A couple of more topics I'll just close within a couple of minutes. The second topic I want to talk about is the word called needful. The first topic is oneness, the oneness of the body of Christ. Oneness of each one of us is extremely critical for the growth of the church. If you are not one, the church is going to be divided. I see that back in India multiple times. There's one brother comes and brings some deception. Some deception. Two brothers fight. It seems two pastors fight. And then there's like big chaos. It's like those two guys fought. What is that to do with the church? Right? There's no meaning to the badness. Right. They were by the way, the disciples like they were on the see the first generation church was fighting for chicken chicken pieces. This is exactly what happened. They were fighting for chicken pieces. It seems the people who are the Jew, the people who are serving were giving a little bit more prominence to the helpless there. They put a little bit two pieces more, it seems. And the guys are like, you know, I was just sitting. That guy is serving that guy, he put two pieces more for, for when it came to me, he put a little bit less uh, somewhat. <laughs> and the guy is like they are fighting. Can you believe that the church would be divided because of Samba? Truly. I'm, by the way, you are all laughing, right? That's what Acts chapter 6 talks about. They fought for like food. And it seems they were serving. And somebody had a bad eye. I, I would call it as a bad eye, right? Because he was probably not a born again believer. Or he, was, he didn't really understand the meaning of serving the Lord. He said, oh, you know what, every time I'm seeing that fellow is putting one chicken curry more, one piece more to this guy, he says, some kirkiri there. And he made a big thing, you know what, dude, he could, you know, he won't do it alone, right? He'll call the other guy and say, hey, look at that, watch that guy, next time when he's putting, just keep an eye on that guy. And he's like, yeah, man, I saw that same thing. And he makes, he brings two more guys, and now there's divisions. Right now, there's a gang there, right? We call it gang. Mobs, right? That's how it is. Like. Paul says, you know, are you from Paul? Are you Apollos? Are you Peter? Right? Is Christ divided? Was Christ crucified? So that oneness, the whole thing is, is based on oneness. If you are not one in Christ, one in one another, you cannot make forward progress. We'll close on the topic of end oneness, I think. Look at this word called needful. If you turn to Bible's book of uh, uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter... Chapter 2, 
verse, uh, sorry, chapter, chapter 1, <coughs> verse 22. But if I live on in the flesh, uh, where was that? Verse 21, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Look at this word. For me to live is Christ, to die is, if I live, I live like Christ. Can you believe that? Say the word. For me to live is Christ. That means when I'm living, I live like Christ. Live for Christ. Live in the image of Christ. Right? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Right? I mean like, Paul is saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That means, we can also go back and put ourselves in that spot and say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Can we say, I mean, right? Can we claim that promise and say, Lord, I want to be like like you, where people can imitate me. That's a big, right? I mean, everybody said, Lord, why don't you imitate Christ? Why don't you live like Christ? But nobody is saying that, Lord, I live like me. If you live like me, that is enough. Now I am going to. That is going to take you to heaven. Paul is bringing that great principle. He said, like, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Look at this. For if I, for me to live is Christ. If I am living, that means Christ is being glorified. And to die is gain. If I die, it is going to be gain. Gain for whom? Gain for whom? Whom? Get you? No. Gain for Paul. If you die, it is not gain for anybody. Except Apostle Paul. There was one brother who died. Remember I told you like, you know, last Mana meetings I came back. There was a little kid of like 19 years. Goes and kills himself. I was destroyed. I, that boy, I seen him from his mom's womb. Comes out and I see the boy. And that boy, we prayed over him that he would be a great instrument. And he was like an amazing drummer. He's like born drummer because of prayer. And some, something happened and he ended his life. Who, who came? We all lost, right? We all lost this brother. Look at this. That is not gain for us. But if I live on in the flesh, this means fruit from my labor. But if you live on earth, there's going to be labor, right? Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. If I go, leave this world, I'll be with Christ, which is far better than living on the earth. But guess what I choose? He says, nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. But my life is always going to be filling voids, filling places of need, is more needful. Is your life being, what do you call it, uh, being used as a place of resource at a place where there is need? I always think about that. Am I needful in this place? You go to work, let's say there are 10 masons, 10 people who can like do and you're the 11th mason, you walk in there and you say like, there's no work. What do you do? That means there's no need for you. Amen? So you got to find a different thing that you can be of use. Paul says that, you know what? For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. But what I choose, I cannot tell. Why? Because I'm hard pressed to live this world. But guess what? If I'm in the world, that means labor from my life. I'm going to produce. By the way, you'll always produce. Amen? I was thinking about this today, I just walked into my home and said like, the home was freely like, you know, we brought all these bags and everything is being unwound and the stuff is all there. But next morning, tomorrow morning, I, right now the state is not good, but tomorrow morning it will be better. Why? Because you can't see that, right? I mean, your wife is going to start like put stuff back, you're going to put, start putting your stuff back and the kids are going to put stuff back. Is that right? By the way, that's what happens when you, when you do hiring. They say when you do business hiring, they say like, you know what, don't worry about you hire the best guy, the guy who just, he doesn't have to work. He'll just be there and natural thing will start to be cleaned up. Right? He'll, because he's, let's say you, you hire an engineer. What an engineer is always going to do what? He's going to fix stuff. He's always going to make things better. Right? He's going to look at it and say like, wow, I'm doing the same thing again and again. Let me create something new. And naturally he's going to do that. So Paul says, naturally I produce fruit. Naturally, I think all you need to do is be in a place where there is need. I am so amazed and so impressed with the worship team now. It was a hard place, by the way. Trust me. It was a hard place. Now, the Lord brought in all the best brothers and sisters who can 
becomes a self-sufficient, independent unit of execution, right? And people come in and they practice, they work on their own. You don't have need guidance, you don't need to push them, you don't need to enforce them, you don't need to force them, right? Forcing is different from enforcing. <laughs> right? It becomes an independent wing that is self-sufficient. Right? And that is what you look at place, where can I be needful? In this church, where can I be needful? Where can I serve? Right? You come in there and then a place opens and you can fit there. And then, let's say that thing is full, then you say, it's like I'm, I'm not being fully used here, let me find another spot, right? And now you go to pick up new stuff and you go run with that, amen? The second thing was that, and third thing I want to share was about burdens on which we don't have time, which the three things I want to share, like not being a burden to the church. Apostle Paul says, like, you know what, I don't want to be a burden to anybody, right? That's what the second book of Second Corinthians talks about, I don't want to be a burden to the church. I want to feed into the church. The third thing is like, never be a burden to anybody. Right? But we feed in. And that was the third piece. The first thing was oneness. We spent a lot of time on oneness. The second piece was needful. Finding the spot where you would be the best utilized. Getting in and finding that crew. And you're like, and now you're executing, right? The third thing is not ever being burdensome to anybody. And uh, giving yourself your best to the Lord. Let's close our eyes. Examine our lives and say, Lord, you're so awesome. You're so beautiful, Lord. You're so wonderful. You want us all to be one in you, one in the Father, one in the Spirit, and one among each one of us. And with the oneness comes execution, solid, perfect execution in your mighty name. And everything has come to us through you. And every authority, all authority has been given to you on all flesh. And to go make disciples in the name of Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit, and move into the uttermost parts of the world. <coughs> that supernatural power comes to you. And we are not of the world. And though we are in the world, we are not of the world. And the radiance and glorification of Christ Jesus comes to us through our lives. The second thing we looked at is needful. That everything that we do is meeting a need of something. If you are an overflow there, it is better not to be there. If you are being utilized there and you should find the place, will I be useful in this church? Can I find something that is going to make me serve the Lord? Is there a need in that area? Is there a need in this area? Can I fill myself there? The last part briefly we looked at is burdens on that. We would not be a burden to the church. We would not be a burden to our fellow brothers. That we would be a wholesome person who gives and offers his life, his everything to the Lord. Let us pray. Anybody would like to pray?